There's a little bit of Pokemon history for you. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to our top 10 list of Generation 3 Pokemon, my very, very favorites, as a matter of fact, Lee. We've also got two favorites from my actual top 10 overall favorite Pokemon list. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, <laughs> but I couldn't include them in this list because I felt that that would be cheating, especially if somebody has already seen my top 10 overall favorite Pokemon list. They would know that these Pokemon were coming up. So we're going to go ahead and spoil that right now, at least the Gen 3 version of that list. And I will tell you that the two Pokemon that appeared on my top 10 overall favorite Pokemon list were Tropius, yes, Mr. Banana Neck himself, and Milotic, the, the Wiggly Water Worm. <laughs> Really, really awesome Pokemon. Really gorgeous. I like the style. I definitely like the move sets. Interesting move sets is uh, a really big appealing factor to me. So we're gonna see a few of those in this list. But yeah, let's jump into it before too much time passes. Thank you so much for joining me. Here it is. Dayton does top ten favorite Gen three Pokemon. Let's go. Number ten. Crawdont is here in the number 10 slot. He is the rogue Pokemon because he do what he want, all right? You can't tell him what to do. Apparently, Crawdont are very difficult Pokemon to raise, which comes with a certain amount of prestige because, you know, it's it's a hard one to raise up, but you've managed to do it. So I really like Pokemon with a, a bad-tempered nature. Not necessarily because I'm bad-tempered myself, although I kind of am in the early mornings before a coffee. But, <laughs> Pokemon like Primeape that can just rip your face off and you manage to befriend it and tame it and make it battle for you, that is amazing to me. Crawdont loves to battle, that is one thing about him. Uh, if he finds another Pokemon in his lake, he is going to battle that thing and try and throw it out with his massive claws. An amazing, amazing Pokemon, I am happy to have him in the number 10 slot. Probably should move him up a little bit more, but there's just so many good Pokemon in all of the generations, honestly, especially, uh, yeah, the first three gens, because that's really what I, what I grew up with. When we get to Gen 4, I'm already, like, you know, an adult. Here, I'm sort of a teenager. But yeah, Crawdon is definitely a good Pokemon to enter this top 10 Gen 3 Pokemon list with. Let's see what's next. Number 9. Next Pokemon up is Slay King. Yes, the king of slacking. Hooray! Apparently, this is the laziest Pokemon. Bar none. There's no question about it, apparently. But I think Snorlax would have something to say about that. Although, Slay King probably does have an advantage uh, as far as that title goes, just because Slay King's ability is Truant. So he'll be able to move the first turn he's out. The second turn, he's just gonna take a little nap, do whatever he wants, scratch his ass, something like that, and he won't be able to make a move. So he's only moving every other turn, which is really, really difficult to counter. But if you are able to uh, circumvent that in some way, then this is just an absolutely devastating Pokemon. One move that I really like is Retaliate. So basically, if one of your Pokemon faints, Retaliate will do 50% more damage on the next turn. Added with Slay King's attack bonus, that's 100% more damage. You add a choice band, 150% more damage. So this thing can really knock a hole in your opponent's team uh, after one of your Pokemon faints, as long as he doesn't have a ghost type waiting in the wings. But you should be able to see that coming. They got a team preview window and all that. Uh, Norman, the gym leader of Petalburg, actually uses a Slay King as his signature Pokemon, and he pairs it with a Spinda, so you can... Uh, get the skill swap ability going, and yeah, give contrary to Slaking, which is really, really devastating, I do think. Slaking learns superpower? I don't know if Slaking learns superpower. Slaking don't learn superpower, but he can learn hammer arm, so if he has contrary, then he'll be boosting his speed, which is already pretty ridiculous for a supposedly lazy Pokemon, <laughs> if you would ask me. 100 base speed? Dango. So, Slay King's evolution line starts out relatively weak. It is hard to raise because you start out with Slaykoff that has that truant ability, and it's super hard to level up. Then you get into the mid stage, Vigoroth, which is, I guess, like a teenager discovering cocaine for the first time, and then finally you uh, get to the old stage. You know, he's an old man now, he's too old for all that coke and stuff. 
and he just wants to chill out and enjoy what's left of his life. But uh, in between that, I'm going to send him into battle stuff because that's what's cool. That's what's good, man. You know what I'm saying? So Slaking, definitely an amazing Pokemon. I really, really like him, um, especially with that Retaliate moveset that I mentioned. He will knock some holes and stuff. Give him a try. If you haven't, don't write him off just because of that terrible, terrible ability. Without that ability, he would be absolutely broken. And there is a number of ways to circumvent that ability. So find one of those ways and... Uh, yeah, harness the power of a massive sloth. <laughs> That's amazing. Number 8. Next on the list we have Metagross, the steel and psychic monster. What a hunk of junk it looks like, but you would be surprised it learns some amazing, amazing moves. Basically, any physical moveset that it can run can hit everything at least neutrally. It learns Earthquake, Stone Edge, Zen Headbutt, uh, even priority moves like Bullet Punch. Metagross is a huge contender. I see it used in OU all the time, and for good reason. It's even got a Mega Evolution these days, which just powers it up even more. That is, that is crazy. Metagross apparently has four brains in total, so it can do difficult calculations faster than a supercomputer. The four leg or the four brains, I suppose, would be the uh, the four legs, which are initially Beldums, and then two Beldums joined together to make a Metang, two Metangs joined together to make a Metagross. I don't really know how that works. In the game, you just level it up. You don't actually have to have two of them in the party. But I think it's some pretty cool lore behind Metang. I don't know what his uh, IQ actually is. It might beat Alakazam, it might not. Because if he's just got four regular ass brains, then what is that? Like 400 IQ? Something like that? Is it an additive or multiplicative? I'm not even sure. I ain't no computer scientist, you know what I'm saying? So, definitely, yeah, you know how good Metagross is. Everybody uses Metagross. It's attack 135 beats out Machamp by five points. It's it's just ridiculous. You are gonna see this thing running a physical move set most of the time. Sometimes it'll uh, try and set up stealth rocks or something in your face, uh, but then you can breathe a sigh of relief <laughs> because when this thing starts swinging on you, that's when you really need to to start worrying. But overall, yeah, it's really good. Stick rock polish on it. Patch up that that abysmal speed. And then you can just start smashing stuff with earthquakes and, uh, I don't know, Zen headbutts. Whatever you want to do, Metagross is an amazing Pokemon. Definitely deserves to be on this list. Number 7. I don't know if you've noticed from my Gen 2 Pokemon list, but I really love Pokemon with Heal Bell. Altaria is a fantastic cleric for your team. It can also uh, Mega Evolve, so it goes from a Dragon Flying type into a Dragon Fairy type, which means that it's going to be able to survive probably one Ice Attack. I mean, if you've built it for HP and Special Defense, and if the Ice Attack is Special Defense, and if you get a little bit lucky with Min Max. <laughs> but regardless of that, Altair is an amazing Pokemon. Doesn't necessarily have to be run as a Cleric, although that is the way that I like to do things. It learns uh, a bevy of nice nice attacking moves its attacking stat is just a little bit slow um at 70 base power but it does learn dragon dance so you get the dragon dance up and uh you're hitting stuff with i don't know sky attack earthquake whatever you want to do you can also throw a flamethrower in there its physical move pool is a little bit shallow if you want me to be completely honest that is largely the reason that I like to run it as a cleric, because every every good team needs a cleric. Whether you're stalling or sweeping, it's just nice to get that uh, thunder wave off your sweepers or toxic off of your walls, whatever you want to do. So Altaria is exceedingly good at that, especially with a mega evolution behind it. Um, the Pokedex says that it is fluffy like a cloud and it hums in a soprano voice. It's a very ladylike Pokemon. It does come in a male and female variety, but I think that those uh, male male Altaria are probably a bit life, light in the loafers. So I don't know how the the Swablus come into existence. <laughs> how how does this species continue itself? I guess I guess they just you know metrosexual or whatever. Is that still a thing? 
I guess I'm getting off topic. <laughs> but yeah, I really like Altaria. Especially when Weather Wars were going on, uh, Altaria had an ability called Cloud Nine, which basically gets rid of weather completely. That was really, really useful for stopping the infinite rain and infinite sun. Now that weather's kind of gone by the wayside, I like to run uh, Natural Cure, so you can get rid of status on Altaria while getting rid of status for your team. It's just a really amazing combination, and uh, yeah, got the bulk to back it up, so fantastic Pokemon. I'll run one on every team that I'm able to. It is that good. Number six. Next Pokemon on the list, lucky number six, is Kecleon. This might seem like a really, really strange choice uh, to a lot of people, but I don't know why you guys are hating on Kecleon. His ability color change is absolutely amazing, although many Pokemon have abilities that do similar things these days, i.e. Porygon, but Kecleon is still in a niche all on its own. It can set up Stealth Rocks, it can uh, Drain Punch, Shadow Sneak, stuff like that, and it will always get same type attack bonus because of color change. So if you can switch up the move, um, predict what your opponent's gonna do, color change to something that is immune to that move, then you can really cause a lot of trouble with Kecleon. His special defense stat is also through the roof, you know what I mean? So slap, basically I do like to use this thing as a tank. His HP does let him down just, just a little bit, but I basically always get Stealth Rock set up with this thing. So I love Kecleon. He's also been quite a star in a, a number of the, the mangas and it was that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. He's like the shopkeeper and stuff like that. So I, I can see the love for Kecleon from Game Freak. They probably should have translated that just a little bit to his stats. But regardless of that, it doesn't matter. Kecleon is a Pokemon that I love to use because it is absolutely unexpected. You know, a lot of people don't remember this thing. Can't quite, can't quite uh, recall what it's going to what its ability is, what it's gonna do. It's super nice for the surprise factor. Sending it in on a special attack, it's going to survive. And then you can use the color change to your advantage. According to the Pokedex, Kecleon can freely change its body color, which is why you sometimes see purple Kecleons, like in the anime. But the zigzag pattern on its belly never changes, which is pretty interesting to me. I don't think that's a very good camouflage, but it is a very good Pokemon. I like it a lot. So, like I say, on all of these, if you haven't tried them out, go ahead and give it a shot. Let me know how it goes. You probably won't be disappointed if you use them correctly. <laughs> number five. Entering the number five slot, we've got Sableye, the darkness Pokemon. Oh, he's so edgy. Um, <laughs> I included Sableye on my top 10 OU Pokemon list. When he was first released in Generation Generation 3, basically nobody thought that he was going to be anything of note. He was lurking down in the lower tiers until he got a hidden ability, Prankster. So now he could set up Calm Minds to patch up his uh, special defense and special attack. Really all his stats are low, so you want Calm Mind to uh, patch up special defense, special attack. You want Will-O-Wisp, so your opponent is only doing half physical damage. And then you can just set up in their face and, um, yeah, recover, recover at your leisure. Unfortunately, that only leaves you with one attacking move. Generally, I'd recommend you pick something uh, with a Dark-type move, because if you pick a Ghost-type attacking move, you're not going to be able to hit Pokemon that are Normal-type, which are just all over in every tier. I really like the fact that he uh, he's obsessed with gems, you know? He's just like, give me the loot, and I'm like, here's $5. He's like, nah, man, you and that diamond ring. I'm like, dude, you got that bling bling, Sableye. What's up with that? <laughs> Anyways, I think it's a really, really cool Pokemon. I'm glad that it's finally come into its own. It has a Mega Evolution, which I don't usually run because its speed basically drops through the floor. Really a cool Pokemon. I don't necessarily recommend Mega Evolving it because it can be run just fine without Prankster and that will save your Mega Evolution for another maybe bulkier sweeper on your team. Really Sableye's uh, quite delicious, you know what I mean? I would say give it a try. If you haven't, I recommend all these Pokemon in this list highly and yeah, 
This is a great way to enter the top five slots. So let's keep it going. On to the next. Number four. We're getting down to the skinny now, and I got a really important question to ask you. Can I ask you one question? Let me ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you a question. <gasps> Do you like mudkips? <laughs> Do you like Mudkips? Because I do. Swampert is amazing, as good as Quagsire was. Swampert took everything and just doubled it. It's basically my favorite starter from Gen 3. I do like Mudkips, and uh, getting rid of that electric type weakness with the water uh, by adding a ground typing in there is just amazing. And then ground typing doesn't even add that many weaknesses. The only thing Swampert really has to watch out for is grass. So. I find it a bit curious that so many people like Mudkips, considering that it's like an 87.5% male, 12.5% female. So you probably you're probably messing around with a male Mudkip, which I guess I guess I'm not gonna judge you. No wait, I am because it's a Pokemon. You need to you need to back up. <laughs> Uh, but Swampert's amazing, you know, he can drag a boulder around that weighs more than a ton. It's got powerful vision, uh, so it can see in, like, muddy water and stuff. Swims faster than a jet ski, um, yeah, and look at, look at the amazing style of it. I really like the orange and the blue, and it, it's just delicious looking. Oh my god, how could you not like Mudkip? As with most of the Pokemon on this list, I guess he is a fan favorite because he has gotten a Mega Evolution, which definitely increases his stats significantly, especially attack. Uh, he also gets the Swift Swim ability, which means get some rain up and this thing is going to be sweeping like a broom. Swampert itself in its regular form doesn't really have any good abilities, but uh, he doesn't necessarily need it. Swampert can do a lot of different stuff, set up Stealth Rocks, run a toxic kind of stall set. You could get in there with the earthquakes and uh, stone edges and try and sweep your opponent. And waterfall. I can't forget the waterfall. You gotta get that same type of attack bonus going, you know what I mean? He doesn't have many uh, stat boosting moves, but Baton Pass is a thing for a reason, so maybe maybe pass Mudkip... I'm sorry. Pass Swampert some... Uh... Why would I say Mudkip? Pass Swampert some speed boost and stuff like that, attack boost, whatever you want to do, just help him out a little bit in his effort to sweep the opponent's team, and it'll happen. Have some faith in him, you know what I mean? You can also skill swap, he learns, uh, he learns superpowers, so if you can skill swap contrary onto him, much like we talked about wanting to do with Slay King, then you can get the uh, attack and defense boost, and Swampert is going to become Quite a hard thing to deal with, as if he wasn't already. <laughs> it's a really, really cool Pokemon. I mean, probably one of my favorite starters, period. Swampert, 10 out of 10. Number three. Do you hear that? It's the music of the woods. The woods. The lost woods. <laughs> Our next Pokemon has a flute that he likes to carry around with him. This is basically not a completely evolved Pokemon because I don't like Shiftry as much as I like Nuzleaf. Nuzleaf has a lot of personality to it. Shiftry is just like, well, he's kind of evil and he has fans on his hand and he can knock over houses with the gust of wind that he can generate, which is impressive. I'll give it that, but I think I'm going to save my Leaf Stone, you know what I mean? Nuzleaf, he's good enough, and I really like his personality most of all. He seems like he's got a lot more, a lot more spunk, a lot more oomph, a lot more uh, interesting everything. So I would take him over Shiftry any day of the week. Like with most Pokemon that evolve with stones, he's his move pool kind of shallow. If you want me to be completely honest. But it's not all completely bad, you know? I haven't tried running this thing with an EVO light. I don't think it would work that well because his defenses are really, really poor. But, um, yeah, as far as style goes, this Pokemon has got style in spades, man. They should put him in a little tuxedo, you know what I mean? I think I see his little, uh, his little tree man nipples, too. Which, you gotta have some balls to run around like that. I would probably have one on my team. And if somebody asked me why I didn't evolve it, I'd be like, Shiftry, play, play Zelda's Lullaby. 
play the Song of Storms. Hell yeah. That's way better than having fan hands or whatever. That's so boring. He loses his ability to play the flute because he gets fan hands. That's, that's horrible. Nobody's gonna like that. I mean, it has its uses, you know, it's hot as hell in the Philippines, sometimes the aircon goes out. But, overall, I think Nuzleaf is better than Shiftry, in a lot of ways. If you want to evolve it, go ahead, I guess, I can't blame you, but it's definitely got a lot of personality. It was the reason that a Nuzlocke was named a Nuzlocke, because some guy had a Nuzleaf and named him Locke, and he was the first one to... Maybe not come up with the idea, but draw a comic about it and share it with the world. There's a little bit of Pokemon history for you. But yeah, Nuzleaf is an amazing Pokemon. Number three on this list. I am proud to have him there, but he wasn't the top. Let's see what beat him out. Number two. Swellow is basically the shit. Before Star Raptor came along, Swellow was definitely my favorite bird Pokemon ever, ever. Maybe even still today, because it has the move or the ability Guts. It's got Guts and it's got Scrappy as its hidden ability. So Scrappy lets you hit Ghost types. Swellow doesn't really have a problem with that because he's got access to moves like Brave Bird. Now I'm not gonna say that Swellow has the most innovative move set or anything like that. Most of them are going to be running something relatively similar to each other, but the design is what really gets me. It just is one of the best looking bird Pokemon as far as I'm concerned. Star Raptor's got like this weird emo hair, Pidgeot also has like the hair that's through the roof. Swellow actually looks like a bird that would fly around without the wind resistance of a weird hairstyle getting in the way. It, it's also uh, extremely conscientious about the upkeep of its glossy wings. So I think that explains a lot of why it is just so gorgeous. I like to run Swellow with uh, Guts, obviously. Usually with a Flame Orb, unless I think I'm really lucky with predictions that way. But yeah, you know what's going to come from Swellow. Double Edge, Brave Bird, U-Turn, uh, some sort of coverage move. Honestly, Swellow's move pool is quite shallow, but... Uh, it does the job. It does the job just fine. I think that's the most important thing. If you have any doubts as to the uh, legitimacy, the the skill of Swellow, like I said, put it in a put it in the team. Give it a test run. You will probably be surprised just how good it is. So what could the number one Pokemon on this list be? I'll let you wonder for that for just a moment while I get into some honorable mentions. Uh, first up, we've got Gardevoir. Just a beautiful Pokemon design with a lot of power behind it. It's definitely a fan favorite. Not one of my favorites, uh, mostly because it gets fetishized a lot. So I've been, I've been scarred by Gardevoir more times than I care to recount, especially visiting the VP board on 4chan. So Gardevoir, honorable mention, nice try, but not quite there. Breloom! Oh my god, this thing is awesome! Huge, huge attack stat. Has access to the move Spore, so it can sleep anything. Uh, it also has Toxic Heal. If you're into that, go ahead and send it out with a Toxic Orb. It recovers 12% compared to leftover 6%. And uh, you can just start smashing things with a Focus Punch, Drain Punch, whatever you want to do. Um, I think it also has access to Skill Link, so if you don't want to run Poison Heal, um, you can basically skill link and get five hits with bullet seed every time. With a, t with a sword stance up, that's really going to hurt unless the opponent has sap sipper and then you probably just screwed yourself. But yeah, Breloom is an amazing, amazing Pokemon and uh, people know about that, you know, especially with access to priority moves like Mach Punch. Oh my god, I just can't go on enough about Breloom. Show Breloom some love, that's all I'm saying. Ludicolo! Oh my goodness, this thing has coverage! Coverage out the yin yang! It's got swift swim, give this thing a life orb, put some rain up, and it's going to sweep. Uh, personally, I would prefer Swampert, but Ludicolo has that grass and water typing, which is really, really interesting. It negates a lot of water's weaknesses with that grass typing, but then you gotta watch out for weird stuff like flying and bugs, which honestly you don't see that much of, but you see enough of. People honestly don't see Ludicolo coming most of the time though, so if you need a, a pinch hitter in your team with some interesting types for uh, 
strange coverage or strange resistance, have a look at Ludicolo. Uh, we've got Hariyama, another honorable mention. I really just love fighting types, honestly. And this one is one of the biggest, the fattest, and uh, I want to say bulkiest, but that's not really true. He's got a huge HP stat, but his defenses are piss poor. However, if you do live through a hit, he is going to smash some stuff up because he's got tons of good abilities. Guts, obviously, is the preferred one. Uh, but yeah, his attack stats through the roof. Get your drain punch on. Boom! Hariyama! Hariyama! I, I, I'm in love with Hariyama. <laughs> obviously, not enough to make the list, but definitely a really, really cool fighting type Pokemon. The final honorable mention, which honestly, him and Crawdont were just battling it out to the very end. Zangoose. Oh my god, the design of this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love Zangoose a lot. Again, his move pool's kind of shallow, but with access to moves like Facade, Close Combat, his hidden ability Toxic Boost, which boosts his attack moves by 50%. Oh my god! Get hit with a Facade from this thing and you are going down. Unfortunately, his defenses are paper thin. It's really hard to get him set up. But he can learn Swords Dance and the like, so if you see a Blissey, send Zangoose in, set up, he's fast enough to get some hits in. You could even teach him Quick Attack. He's a really awesome Pokemon that doesn't get used enough in my opinion, but um, so are all of these Pokemon for the most part. Except for the fan favorite ones, like uh, Metagross, Altaria, Swampert, yes, those, those had to be on the list, or I wouldn't forgive myself, so Zangoose got bumped. I'm so, so sorry, my little buddy, but he was also on my favorite Shinies list, so I guess I hope that makes up for it just a little bit. And now, here it is, the final, the top of Gen 3. And number one. sha 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 Sharpedo. <laughs> oh god, I love Sharpedo. Honestly, his attack stat, through the roof, his defense is paper thin, uh, special attack is also up there so you can run a mix set if you want, which people get really, really surprised by if you do that. He's got a decent amount of speed, but his ability speed boost is what really makes this Pokemon for me. Sharks are just awesome animals overall, and this thing can tear through a super tanker with its jaws, it swims like 75 miles per hour according to the Pokedex by farting water out of its body. <laughs> That's how good this thing is. It's just such a likable Pokemon. And obviously the community agrees because Sharpedo has a mega evolution as well. Oh my god, what, what a great thing. So you might want to send Sharpedo in, get a couple of speed boosts up before you mega evolve because once he's mega evolved, his ability becomes Strong Jaw. But Strong Jaw is going to massively boost the power of moves like Crunch, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, whatever your coverage move is. He's definitely an amazing, amazing Pokemon. You can learn Poison Fang. Um, usually I'll run something like Crunch, Waterfall, Protect to get those speed boosts up, and then Ice Fang for coverage. And yeah, you're getting the uh, Strong Jaw boost on most of these things. I, I will not hesitate to run uh, Mega Mega Evolving Sharpedo because it is just such a good sweeper. It gets a bit more bulk. It gets a bit more everything when it Mega Evolves, which I think is really, really awesome for it. Mostly the reason that I like it is because of the stats. I also have some fond memories of Gen 3. Obviously, like I've said many times before, I was an angsty teenager, something like that. So I picked up a shark Pokemon and I was like, hell yes. This thing is coming with me to the Elite Four, and boy did it. So, I'm so excited this thing can Mega Evolve now. Base stats shoots up from uh, 120 attack to 140. Oh my god, that is insane! And uh, you can even pass some boost to it. He can't really boost himself aside from the speed boost ability, but does he really need to? Does he really need to? He's just that good. That is it, friends! My top 10 favorite Gen 3 Pokémon. Quite a good list, if I do say so myself, at least in my estimation. If you disagree with my list, if you think maybe I should add somebody, kick somebody, if you think I should honorably mention somebody that I did not honorably mention, then please let me know in the comments. I would be glad to discuss it with you at length. We can poke a nerd out to your heart's content. 
I really, really love every Pokemon that's been invented thus far, but Gen 3 was an especially good one. It was also kind of weird because um, it was sort of a reset button for the Pokemon franchise. You couldn't transfer your Pokemon from Gens 1 and 2, so people got a little bit pissed off about that. But I managed to make a ton of new bros, and I think that shows through in this video. <sighs> Once again, friends, we've got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Do not hesitate to support me on any of those if you like what I'm doing here. Big thanks to MMX Akira for supporting me on Patreon. If you would like a shout out, something like that. We've got plenty of reward tiers on Patreon, so you can click on through. Check those out. Alrighty, I guess that wraps it. Join me for Gen 4, which is coming quite soon as well. I'm trying to pump these out as quickly as I can. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of debate going on in my heart while I'm making it. <laughs> Even after I publish it, I'm like, what about, what about? Anyways, once again, thank you for watching, friends. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed. I've been Brandon Dania, humble narrator. This has been my favorite top 10 Gen 3 Pokemans. And I shall see you in the next one, friends. So until then... Bye-bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.